In the previous video, we talked about the concept of relative frequency. We also discussed how to use relative frequencies to obtain probabilities of events. In real life, we have to be very careful of how we interpret probabilities. In particular, it is especially important to know how to interpret statistics and probabilities when they show up in the news. For example, let's say I read a story in the newspaper today about a study and they found that people who drink excessive coffee, let's say 10 cups a day, have a 50% less chance of being afflicted by disease A, okay? So how do you interpret this? 50% is a huge decrease. So what do we do with this information? Now, before you rush to your local Starbucks and try to drink 10 cups of coffee a day, let's analyze this more carefully. Disease A is dangerous, true, but most dangerous diseases are also very rare. Let's say that from a sample of 1,000 people, two people will on average actually get disease A. Let's say that's the disease occurrence rate in the population. Now, if we reduce this by 50%, what do we get? 50% of 2 over 1,000 is only 1 over 1,000, right? So what this means is that before drinking 10 cups of coffee per day, your odds of having this disease were 2 over 1,000, and afterwards is only 1 over 1,000. It's a very small decrease, right? Both of them are very small numbers and the absolute difference is only 1 over 1000. It's hardly anything noticeable and it sounds much different than saying it's a 50% decrease. It is important here that we pay attention to the absolute values rather than the percentages. A lot of times things are reported as percentages and it might be a little misleading when we look at them. 50% here is huge, but on the other hand, the absolute difference is only 1 out of 1000, which is not a large number. So why do they report things like this? The answer is that, if you write an article and say it decreases your chances of getting this disease by 1 out of 1000, nobody will read that article because it does not sound very important or impressive. Thus, when we are careful about things and we understand how to read these probabilities, then we can understand what they actually mean. In fact, we can push this thinking a little further. The absolute difference here is very small. But also think about this. 10 cups of coffee a day is probably not very good for your health. So not only is the difference very small, but if you attempted what the article seems to suggest, you may do more harm to yourself than good. Lastly, we have to be careful about the studies themselves. Sometimes, some company has a drug or something, and they fund a study that displays the effectiveness of their drug. So, we also have to think about things such as who conducted the study, who funded the study, and so on. Being aware of such things is also extremely important in improving our decision-making abilities in general. It also goes the other way around, right? Let's say again you read the newspaper and it says that people who drink coffee experience a 100% increase of a different disease, disease B. So you increase your chance of getting this disease by 100% simply by drinking coffee. You might get scared if you are a coffee drinker, but again think about this rationally and carefully. If disease B affects only 1 out of every 1000 people, that chance only increases to 2 out of 1000 if you drink coffee. Again, a very small difference in terms of the absolute difference which is only 1 out of 1000. So basically, when we read the percentages, we should also look at the absolute values to make sure we have a better understanding of what the studies actually mean. So this principle of looking at the absolute values is a very useful one in general. For example, suppose that I want to purchase an item that is sold for $20 at my local store, but I can get the exact same item for $10 if I go to a different store that is 20 minutes away. I might be tempted to get into the car and go to the second store as I can get the item 50% cheaper. On the other hand, consider the same scenario, only this time I am buying an item that is $500 in my store and $490 in a store that is 20 minutes away. This time, I am less likely to make the travel because I consider $10 a very small percentage of $500. In reality, however, this is irrational because in both cases, I am evaluating whether I am willing to trade going to and returning from the second store for $10 or not. This is why it is important to consider the actual values involved in the situation rather than the percentages. I want to end this video by mentioning a concept that you might have heard before. Correlation does not mean causation. What does this mean? Basically, let's say as an example, there has been a study and they find that people who are bald are twice as likely to have heart disease compared to people who are not bald. So if you are not bald, let's say your probability of having heart disease is X, and if you are bald, your probability of having heart disease is 2X, right? Then you might conclude that being bald causes heart disease. Well, this is not necessarily true. A very easy explanation could be that, well, people who are bald are more likely to be older, and if you are older, you are more likely to have heart disease, right? So indeed, although baldness and heart disease have a correlation, it does not mean that one of them causes the other. It just simply means that both of them are most likely a side effect of getting older. 
In summary, when dealing with statistics and probabilities in real-life scenarios such as these, it is always important to look at the absolute values involved, the reason behind the study, and the rational explanations for finding of said study. Thank you for watching.